I'm Billy S, welcome back to the channel. I've been putting this off for a while, but today we're going to be starting a little series talking about Soulsborne music. Starting with Dark Souls, the OST I'm most familiar with, I'll be going through the series ranking every music track from worst to best. But this time I've got a little tier list to help me out. S through D tier, as I don't feel any of the tracks in Dark Souls deserve the F tier, it's time to see how Motoi Sakuraba's amazing soundtrack for the original Dark Souls holds up. I've been a fan of his work since the GBA Golden Sun games, so I'm very used to his musical style. The only rule I've put in place is that I can only have three tracks in S tier. And fair warning, I have no knowledge of music theory, so I am woefully inept at pointing out different instruments and musical techniques. I'm just someone who enjoys listening to the music and talking about what it made me feel. So be sure to parry that subscribe button to stay up to date on this series in the future as I do the other games, and let's get into it. Every Dark Souls music track ranked, let me know your favourites down below. Starting off D tier, let me stress that the five tracks I'm placing in this category are still fantastic in their own right. I genuinely don't think there's a bad theme in this entire game, just a few that feel either underwhelming or unmemorable. So starting off, we have Ceaseless Discharge. Motoi Sakuraba has a very distinct style when it comes to handling the demons of the Dark Souls trilogy. There's a lot of low heavy chanting, a lot of brass instruments that add a harsh tone to their themes, and when the Witch of Isolith or her kids are involved, you'll get hints of a female vocalist in the background as well. My problem with Ceaseless is that his theme is just the least interesting variant of this. He shares a lot of his motifs with Quelag, and because of his position in the game, you'll already be used to them from her fight. Except I think her music is just inherently better, which doesn't reflect well on Ceaseless. The fact that when I'm not listening to his theme, I can't even think about what it sounds like in my head is the biggest knock against him. Next up in D tier, we have Guinevere, Princess of Sunlight a serviceable background theme for when you first discover the great chest ahead. It oozes radiance and authority, this is someone who is here to help you and care for you. The uplifting choir and the church organ really sell this godlike energy. But of course, it really is too good to be true, and I love how the music reflects this by leaning so far into the positivity. It's a stark contrast to everything you've heard in the game so far, and on a first reveal, I really liked the track. This part in particular is Ear Candy. Yet it's not the type of music I come for when I play Soulsborne games, and that's mainly why it ranks so low. I just prefer the melancholy. Now for a hot take, Iron Golem! I love the way this track immediately gets across the danger of the situation. Perched atop a narrow roof, various harsh pounding drum beats echoing the footsteps of the giant. The strings and piano chords that raise and lower in key at rapid speed to denote the panic of the player. This is a track I think many viewers will have in a much higher tier, and I understand that. If you've ever summoned Black Iron Tarkas for this fight, you probably have very epic memories of this music. Yet for me, while I like this theme, it's a case where I feel other tracks just do the same thing but better. Personal taste? Feel free to roast me in the comments, I'm sure I deserve it. Two to go, let's talk about Centipede Demon, which also shares its theme with the Capra Demon. Though you can tell the theme is made for the centipede. Just listen to the instruments at the start that elicit that crawling sensation, like a hundred little legs scrabbling along the floor like a centipede. The sound effect appears throughout the theme, which ties everything together nicely. The female vo the female vocalist comboed with the male choir returns, and they're more memorable here than in Ceaseless's theme, but they're at their best in Quelag's track. The demonic themes just come off a bit too similar for my tastes in Dark Souls 1, and I vastly prefer the more unique tracks higher in my ranking. 
Lastly for the D tier, we have Sanctuary Guardian from the DLC. I like the composition of this track a lot, it's more bombastic than the themes we've seen so far, aside from maybe the Iron Golem, and I like that it takes us on a proper journey with a lot of varying levels to each part of the music. I especially love this brief bit of chanting. It just hits a nice spot in my brain. But this track is also an example of a theme that doesn't have a noticeable melody to it. It's a lot of well-orchestrated music, I like listening to it, but there's nothing memorable to help me remember it. The base game has a lot of tracks, but they all feel distinct because they have something in them that you'll remember, as we'll see moving forwards. Sanctuary Guardian doesn't quite achieve this, and feels more like a generic boss theme you'd find against a random boss in an Elden Ring cave. Moving on to C tier, we're already into the tracks I actively would enjoy listening to. Maybe not themes I'd seek out all the time, but every once in a while the music here hits. Starting off with Chaos Witch Quaylag. I think the leitmotif of all the demonic themes having extremely similar sounds just didn't really pay off with me, as they all ended up near the bottom of the list. Quaylag is easily the best of the trio we've seen so far though, with the female vocalist at her strongest here. Love this moment where she just gets to belt it out. And the male vocals once again provide a very ominous touch to the encounter. The way the instruments will sometimes switch to harsh brass and low drum beats while not going overboard with it is something I really appreciate. The song builds itself up with each pass until it eventually loops, but when I think about this theme, it's only that little portion I showed you that stays in my mind, and that's partly why it ranks in C tier. I'm not sure how controversial this next take is, but Prologue is a C tier track for me. I really enjoy the opening movie for Dark Souls, it's iconic, the opening few notes of string are effective, and the way the music builds up to complement the narration and the visuals are top tier. Yet, we're ranking the music on its own, and I think if you take away the cutscene it accompanies, it's not terribly interesting to listen to. It needs the narration to effectively build its tension, and without that, the track doesn't go anywhere. I think about the opening to Lord of the Rings, and Galadriel's monologue accompanied by the iconic musical score. Prologue from Dark Souls does the exact same thing, I'm convinced they were directly inspired by Lord of the Rings, yet I'll always remember the Lord of the Rings score because the music used ended up having a leitmotif across the rest of the movies. While for Dark Souls, if the prologue does leitmotif into the game, I haven't personally recognised it. Next on the list, Daughters of Chaos, a melancholic and downright tragic tune to chill to while you're at the Daughters of Chaos bonfire. In-game, it's actually quite nice to relax here with the female vocalist providing a downright haunting performance. A few brief piano keys here and there, the percussion doing a fantastically subtle job, yet the strings here and there make you realise you're still in a dangerous place. It's a small safe haven in the depths of the world, but you're still in the depths of the world. It's a shame this theme exists in the same game as Firelink Shrine because it just doesn't compare, and I almost always would rather listen to that theme instead. Let's get the last Isolith out of the way, Bed of Chaos is next. I originally had this track much higher in the tier list, until I realised my favourite part of the music is that opening with the harp going back and forth, surprisingly beautiful to complement the horror you're seeing in front of you. By contrast, I don't really recall the rest of the track all that much. It has its moments of levity, and is surprisingly calm for a Lord Soul fight, but it's another track where it just doesn't stick in my head unless I'm actively listening to it. Great use of the drums, cymbals, and the harp to create a very discordant, yet somehow pleasing melody. Doesn't make any sense, but we'll go with it anyway. And rounding out the C tier, we have Seath the Scaleless. By contrast, I recall Seath's theme very vividly, and I absolutely adore how hard they went on the percussion here. A lot of the sounds feel like they're twinkling or shining, which is perfect for Seath's fight and location. 
Then we've got some ominous piano, a few low-key trumpets, and the male and female vocalist coming together to create some great chanting that feels completely different to their appearances in the demonic themes. The only part of the track I personally didn't vibe with is the string sequence that uses the same crawling sensation from the Centipede Demon track. I like that the song goes for a lower level here to build back up to the bombastic chorus, but the scrabbling strings feel a tad too much for me. He almost made it into B tier, but I wanted to show some restraint and make some cutoffs, otherwise this wouldn't be much of a tier list. But I beg of you, go listen to Seath's theme again, but focus on the background percussion. It's so underrated, yet helps make the track exactly what it is in-game. On to B tier, we have eight tracks to get through on our journey up the Pantheon, starting with Crossbreed Priscilla. The opening 20 seconds easily puts this track onto the B tier with its iconic female vocals, and the way it complements seeing this towering figure for the first time in game. It's a theme fit for someone regal, beautiful, and haunting. Yet it also belies her nature as a pacifist. She only fights when forced to, and the way the track remains very somber and melancholic, with only a few harsh drum beats to denote she's still powerful, is super cool. My favourite part is here. I just think the vocals are gorgeous, and the hymn-like nature of their delivery sends shivers down my spine. It doesn't land any higher because I feel like the track is a little samey the longer it goes on, and doesn't quite hit with repeated listens in a shorter time frame, but look, Priscilla's theme is still bloody brilliant. Another hot take maybe, Manus, Father of the Abyss is one of the least interesting DLC soundtracks in the entire series. And this is coming from a Manus lover, so you know I'm not biased here. I love the opening, it goes full throttle from the very start, which matches the aggression of Manus to a T. He doesn't give the player any openings, and his music doesn't let up from its downright dangerous nature. Themes regarding the Abyss in Dark Souls tend to land in one of two camps, tragedy and majesty, or the equivalent of there is a missile trained on your location that will be hitting you in 3, 2, 1, and Manus definitely hits the second one. His Abyss is a threat, and it's the most danger you're ever in as the player, and you can really hear it here. Next, this is an interesting one, Battle of Stoicism. As someone who doesn't do PvP in these games, as I'm just a single player kinda guy, I've never heard this track before. It was added as part of the PvP in Artorius of the Abyss, and it has absolutely no right to go as hard as it does. It has a great sense of levels, and the overall melody feels very inspiring, like a champion rising from the ashes. And all of this for two players who are likely using cheesy builds on laggy internet to maybe kill each other? It's the way the song isn't afraid to get extremely quiet with the bells in the background, before it swells up into this Dark Souls 3-esque finale that I can't help but love. It's actually criminal that this was only a PvP theme, because I want to hear it again. Since I've literally never heard this track before until making this video, I can't put higher than B tier, as I just need more personal connection to it. But don't sleep on Battle of Stoicism. Next up, the other aggressive Abyss track, Four Kings, which manages to feel far more imposing to me than Manus's theme. Part of this is because it's tied to a gank fight, in a pitch black room where you can't see anything, making it feel more helpless and, dare I say, terrifying. We've got the guttural throat chanting of the male vocalist, and a fast pace from the jump that doesn't let up across the entire track, super fast strings to keep the player moving, this is anxiety in music form. I hear this track when I need to script a video and only have a few hours to get it done. And then they add the brass.
an easy B tier, but I could see myself moving it up to A if I was just a little personally attached to the music. So goodbye anxiety, hello, the ancient dragon, the theme of Ash Lake. Do you like grand choirs with deep voices? If so, this is the track for you. Already, I have an attachment to this theme because it belongs to Ash Lake, one of my favourite areas from a lore perspective, and the comedy of being able to start and stop the music in-game by looking up at the sky, then back to the ground, is peak hilarity. You don't belong here, and this choir is far stronger than you. It feels like a requiem for the dragons who were lost in the pursuit of the Age of Fire, and that's fitting, as it's also the theme of the dragon you find at the road's end. There's so much majesty and mystery surrounding Ash Lake, and the music really makes you feel out of your depth, which is paired beautifully with being on this single piece of land amidst a dark sea of black void. Whether you feel this is a theme that welcomes you, or a theme that tells you to go back to your own realm, it is awe-inspiring and overwhelming, and a perfect way to introduce such an important area. Sticking with dragons, Gaping Dragon, for some reason, my head Mandela affected me. Because this theme is that of the Gaping Dragon, yet for some reason I always connect it to the Iron Golem, and I have no idea why. I love the way it starts, immediately preparing you for a tough battle. Motoi Sakuraba has certainly got a specific style when it comes to dragon fights, as a lot of the music here is very reminiscent of multiple boss fights against dragons in Golden Sun, which obviously attracts me to high heaven. But more than that, I read a comment that stated this feels like it came out of Shadow of the Colossus, and holy fuck they are so right, just listen. It's not as uplifting as some of Shadow of the Colossus's best tracks, but I think it comes so close due to both games having orchestral themes. Gaping Dragon goes so hard, it didn't need to, but it does. Just two more tracks missing out on the A tier, and you will be shocked as next, we have Taurus Demon. If there is a boss theme that represents Dark Souls, I think the Taurus Demon is right up there. You hear it four different times in-game against the Asylum Demon, Taurus Demon, Stray Demon, and Demon Fire Sage, yet it is fantastic every time. From the supercharged, heavy instruments and chanting at the start, to the way the song shifts gears midway through until it reaches Matoi Sakuraba's signature fast-paced compositions. I adore this man and his work, and you can tell he put his whole Sakura Bussy into the creation of this track. It just has so many elements, making it one of the most complex in the game when you listen to it. If I wasn't being so picky, it would be in the A tier, but I have to show some restraint. And rounding out B tier, we have Grave Lord Nito. How much mileage you get out of Nito's theme will vary from person to person, but as a massive horror fan, and someone who really enjoys themes that creep me out, and make me viscerally nervous, Nito does a great job. Admittedly, I do think his theme suffers slightly from not having his ear-piercing screams from his Gravelord's sword attack when listening to it on its own, but hey, that's a small price to pay, and I guess it justifies his spot in B tier as opposed to A. The harsh instrumental belies the danger of facing the god of death. The choir is at its most ominous here, and I love how when the music quiets down, you can hear people just going, woo like ghosts. Have a listen. It's a bit on the nose, very camp, but very fucking funny. The aggressive beats paired with the low chanting and the very twangy strings just hits a note I love. But there's also a small element of Ash Lake in the motif, but far more terrifying. 
Perhaps not intentional, but given Nito's realm is about as close to Ash Lake as you can get, maybe I'm onto something. We are officially in the A tier. From this point on, all of these songs are in my Soulsborne playlist rotation because they are all certified bangers and mash. But before I reveal the next entry, once again, please be sure to parry that subscribe button. We've got eight A tier songs. Let's jump in with Dark Sun Gwendolyn. So, I'm autistic, and sometimes I get specific ticks from certain music that just sticks with me. In a different way than, oh, this song's memorable, it's more like I'll just randomly belt a small bit of song or music out without even trying. And the, uh, uh, is ingrained into my soul. This is such a beautiful track, completely devoid of any harsh instruments or anxiety-driven paces. It's magic. It's magic in the form of music. Which is fitting, as the two fights it plays with are the Moonlight Butterfly and Gwendolyn. It's such a stark contrast to pretty much everything we've listened to up to this point, and that's what brings it into the A tier. Not every theme has to be this larger-than-life epic orchestral piece. Sometimes it can be as simple as a pair of female vocalists delivering some of the best high notes you've ever heard in your life, while a very gentle harp is plucked in the background. Moving on, we have the Bell Gargoyles. Of the traditional boss themes from the base game, this is one of the best. It has all of Matoi Sakuraba's DNA over it, from the memorable opening intro, a chorus that is extremely catchy, and features multiple different levels to the music, with various sections that highlight the choir, the brass, the strings, and the energy of there being two enemies to fight. I love this moment where the theme takes a turn for the downright disturbing at the midpoint. Which is then followed by... Come on now, this is fantastic! Some extremely high highs and some extremely dark lows. Throughout the track, create this great back and forth as you deal with your first gank in the series. Speaking of ganks, Ornstein and Smo, the unofficial theme of Anor Londo. You hear this theme when you go over the walls and reveal the Golden City, and we hear it again when we're getting absolutely pounded by a big guy and a little guy. Of all the grandiose boss themes in the game, ONS come the closest to feeling like these royal guards. The brass, the trumpets. It creates this aura that we're fighting incredibly important figures, and there's a real sense of triumph in the music. It doesn't delve into the horrific or the uncomfortable like the various demons we fought. It quite literally feels like the theme of an honourable duel. Even when the theme slows down, it has elements of this religious slowness, which is perfect for the setting of the cathedral. And the harp showing up every now and then to add a little extra spice to the backing is everything I've ever needed. It doesn't rank any higher though, purely because I find the upcoming music just hit me more on a personal level. Next up, A Moment's Peace by Yuji Takanoichi. This is the character creation theme, and the only one that Motoi Sakuraba did not compose, and of all the themes in Dark Souls 1, this is the most relaxing to sit back and listen to, especially when scripting videos. Making your character while listening to the gorgeous strings and the slight shimmery chimes in the background sets a brilliant tone. The calm before the storm, as someone once said. There's a very faint vocalist in the background at certain points, creating this ethereal quality that has me on the edge of my seat. It's most reminiscent of the save room themes from the Resident Evil games, but with a more positive spin. And then that bit where it goes to a slightly different key before going back to the chorus, oh, it's ear candy.
four more to go, let's discuss Knight Artorius. One of my favourite boss fights in Soulsborne got a justifiably tragic theme to play him off into the night. The best way to describe it, it's like a sad version of Ornstein and Smo, starting off with what could have been a big intro before petering down into a tragic melody. And as it progresses, that melody becomes creepier, more vocals chime in spookily around the main music, and it creates that energy of Artorius losing his sense of self. The theme builds up, getting more intense until, once again, it's stripped back. Like the way Artorius buffs himself throughout the fight, gaining bursts of aggression, the music responds. And with certain parts of the fight having dark, faint chants in the back as well, ooh, it is a beautiful track. Especially this part, which has such an impact. Those last set of notes felt nightly, like those in ONS's fight before we're snuffed back into the dark. Three more to go in A tier, and we have Pinwheel. While Nito's theme was distressing and evil in its own way, there's something about Pinwheel. The opening notes are so iconic to me, I've got no idea what the instrument they're using is, but it's so deliciously good. The whispering throughout the track, referencing the many souls involved in the necromancy of Pinwheel, is far more pronounced and mature than those spooky ghosts in Nito's theme, and I definitely prefer this. The strings feel very threatening, and then the female vocalist brings in some haunting vocals to bring it together. It builds up in tension, then releases, and we get a gorgeous piece of violin. This music is eerie, I could see it being used for the Headless or the Shichimen Warriors in Sekiro, and it would still work as a boss theme. And it just feels so unique, so different to everything else in the soundtrack, as it builds up to a big crescendo before looping that has me ready for more. This track is fire, as long as you leave Pinwheel alive long enough to listen to the full two minutes. Now let's put the DLC out of its misery, let's listen to Calamite. Ugh, that introduction is so exciting. It's the most intense in the game, and really gets you psyched to face down an exceptionally tough opponent. And contrasted with the low, throaty sound coming from the male vocalist, it is a talent. The theme takes lay motifs from the various different dragon fights in the game, like Gaping, Seath, and even has moments late into the track that sound like the opening for Medea's fight from Dark Souls 3. You can tell from the key and the tone, this is THE dragon to fear. Calamite is a calamitous force of nature you have to overcome. I love this part with the percussion in the background, it's such an underrated piece of music, have a listen. I would argue that this theme is far more threatening to me than Manus, and it even has the church organ choir towards the end that's reminiscent of something like Lish Dragon Fortisax from Elden Ring. An absolutely fire track that definitely deserves top 5. And rounding out the A tier, we have Great Grey Wolf Sif. 
What do I need to say that hasn't been said about Great Grey Wolf Sif? It's one of the saddest themes in the game, but doesn't rely on quiet tones to get that across. We've got a very vocal male and female performance that permeates a lot of the quiet. It's a funeral march, which is fitting because Sif is fully aware that by going against the Chosen Undead, they're accepting their own demise. I love the moments of quiet, contrasted beautifully when the music changes and the vocals come back in. It sends shivers down my spine. All while I'm watching a dog on screen limping towards me. There's a genuine argument to be made that this is one of the most iconic tracks in the franchise. It's got the right amount of tragedy, melody, and originality that a fantastic piece of music needs. I don't think I need to justify this any further. If anything, I have to justify why my next three picks are higher than Sif. And we've made it to the S tier, where my top three tracks from Dark Souls 1 reside. The creme de la creme, and our bronze medal, goes to Firelink Shrine. When you think of Soulsborne, you think of a bonfire, and when you think of bonfires, you think of Firelink Shrine. And then the calming music begins. The music is a little heaven of peace in the chaos of Lordran, one of only a handful of places where music plays ambiently. The strings are slow, deliberate, and the main melody is constant and comforting. There's a little fear of the unknown, a little edge so that you're not 100% happy, but at least you're here, and at least you're alive. I love this moment where the percussion kicks in. It reminds me a lot of Majula from Dark Souls 2. I love how the music isn't afraid to quiet down for a moment. It uses silence just as well as the melody, and you're trained to feel safe when you hear it as well. I wish we could go back to games like Dark Souls where everything felt smaller and more personal, more comforting, dare I say. This theme makes me so nostalgic. Next up, silver medal, we have Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. Of all the tragic themes in the franchise, I don't think any have come close to the sheer iconic nature of Plin Plin Plon. Those simple piano notes are enough to bring grown men to tears, to bring PTSD to players, and to make us all think about a different time. The final boss theme being this sad husk of what a final boss theme normally is, well, that's just brilliant right there. Piano is my favourite instrument, I really love how they sound, and this track takes full advantage. Did you know it's played entirely on the white keys from the piano? Even his theme was afraid of the Age of the Dark. It reminds me a bit of a sad version of the credits theme from Shadow of the Colossus, but if things didn't have a hopeful ending. And nowhere is that best seen to me than in this part. Yet, my gold medal, my favourite track, it represents closure, something we all strive for in our lives. It is... Nameless Song. With vocals by Emmy Evans, this is the credits theme for Dark Souls, and it's… beautiful. The vocals are clean and pure, ethereal, and mixed with the subtle music cues, Emmy takes centre stage. For some, this track is sad, as it represents finishing Dark Souls while wishing for more. For some, this track is happy, as it represents the world moving forwards regardless of your choice, and how you've overcome that adversity. 
For me, this track is a cap to end my journey. Don't be sad because it's over, be happy because it happened. This world was doomed to die regardless of our actions, but at least we lived. At least we mattered, even if we are the only one to know this. While I could have gone with my favourite boss track or my favourite ambient music, the reality is that in games like this, the credits have such a vital role to send the player on with the correct feelings. Nameless Song is one of only a handful of games that I feel actually manages this feat, and as you thinking long after you put down the game. It is my favourite song in Dark Souls, and it is well worthy of the S tier. And that's my list. Which Dark Souls music tracks are your favourite? Let me know your lists down below. I'm genuinely curious, as music is completely subjective. There is no objective way to rank any of these. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to parry that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of my future videos, including videos like this one on the other Souls games. Oh Christ, Dark Souls 2 is gonna kill me! A massive shout out to my YouTube channel members, you can see them on screen now on the left, and on the right you can see my social medias, where you can follow me either on my Twitter, my Discord, or my Blue Sky. Blue Sky is possibly the best place to go at the moment because Twitter is a shithole, and I don't really use my Discord, oof. Uh, so I'll see you guys next time for another video. Adios.